Well, we're at the NAB show. A little early in the morning here, but I am at the what they call the road to ATSC 3.0. This is the new 3.0 over there TV standard that will be coming out in test markets like Phoenix, as you're seeing right here, later this year for testing and rolling out across the country from there. Uh, it'll bring 4K, better penetration and reach in other markets and more. So we're going to kind of dive in here, just kind of walk around real quick, show you what there is. Now, LG was announced as one of the partners for the 3.0 test. You see they're showing off some LG tuners and TVs right now for this. Now, I'll link to, um, in the show notes, a full step-by-step -step walkthrough of my demo I got at CES. You know, this screen is very similar to what you'll see there if you want more details on how it'll all work and what exactly you're seeing here. You can see these are markets that are expected to roll out the new one. Washington, D.C., Cleveland, East Lansing, Michigan, Riley, Dallas, Phoenix, and Las Vegas, Portland. South Korea is already rolling out in um, some areas. Cleveland is another test market currently with Sinclair and others. It's like Fox 8 is going to be one of those. The OP Vision HDR will be part of the 3.0 standard testing, it looks like. Sorry. Well, that is a quick walk through the booth. I'll have more detail. They are having a ribbon cutting later. We're going to do some work on. We're going to be here for, I should say, to be able to tell you more about what they're going to be showing off and doing in the weeks and months to come. Phoenix is supposed to be one of the main ones. Um, it was recently announced that uh, Dish and, um, and Sinclair and I want to say Nexstar, don't count me on that, and Dallas is... Um, testing uh, we'll have a link to that story in the show notes also but yeah 3.0 offers better uh, picture quality 4k better penetration it's supposed to do a much better job cutting through trees and buildings and so forth to bring the over the air tv signal to you and of course 4k tv being a big part of it ability to have interactive guides where for instance you see a commercial you want to learn more about that you could click on a button launch a web page and get um more details on that news story you were watching or that product you sell an ad for. So check back for more later on. We're coming. Uh, it's a big day for us here at ATSC. My name is Dave Arland and i am uh, got my fingers in various uh, businesses that are part of this today and I'm very happy with our team that was able to put all of this together in the road to ATSC 3.0. So we're going to have a few brief remarks from the folks who made this all possible. And we'll start with Mark Richer. Mark is president of the Advanced Television Systems Committee. Mark. Thank you, Dave, and good morning, everybody. And welcome to the Road to ATSC 3.0. You know, it was just a year ago when we were here cutting the ribbon uh, last year. And we were talking about the standard, and we were focused on the development of the standard and how far it'd come and all the potential it'll bring. And just a few months ago, uh, NAB and CTA and ATSC were together toasting the completion of the standard and the FCC adoption and the deployment in, in Korea. Um, this year, we're less focused on the development of the standard and the standard itself, and more in the deployment than the future of the broadcasting business. And that's what we hope to show here at this display. In this display, the Rotate ATSC, you'll see graphical representation and videos showing all the activities going on around the country in the U.S., uh, various trials and testing, also the deployment in, in Korea, 
Uh, three, we have three Korean broadcasters here showing content that's really stuff on the air in Korea. It's, it's really happening. Uh, but it isn't just what we show in this booth here today, uh, because it's all around the convention center. It's in the Futures Park, of course. Uh, Sam will tell you a little bit about uh, the moving demonstration in the van. Um, but it's also around the whole floor. The, all the, ex the exhibitors, over 40 ex different exhibitors showing ATSC 3.0 products and services. That's how we know it's real. That's how we know it's happening. Um, and I'm really uh, proud of the way the industry uh, has seized the opportunity of ATS ATSC 3.0. Let me uh, thank uh, our co-host sponsors. We couldn't do it without the Consumer Technology Association and the NAB, of course. Um, without their support, this wouldn't happen. Not just their financial support and the NAB giving us this pre pre primo real estate at the convention, um, but their, their um, uh, support throughout the every year, uh, support of ATSC since its founding, and their continued cooperation to try to work together in a collaborative mode to, to really develop, continue to develop and move broadcasting forward. I also want to thank um, uh, some of our other sponsors that you'll hear from today, uh, the Pearl Group, Sinclair Broadcast Group, a. Warren, Dolby, and Sony for all their great efforts and their support in putting this together. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Sam Matheny, Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of NAB. Hello, everybody, and good morning. Uh, I want to welcome you on behalf of NAB to the NAB show and to the ATSC Pavilion. Uh, this is a really exciting year. As Mark was saying, we are moving uh, to a new phase. Uh, we're moving into the implementation phase. And, uh, and, and this booth and, and everything that is represented here really represents that um, because there is a lot of technology that has been documented in the standard when it was released in January. And now we're taking that standard and real products are being built. I want to take a moment just to call your attention to a couple of things. One, as Mark mentioned, Futures Park. It is in North Hall and inside Futures Park you will be able to see uh, a number of different demonstrations of ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV uh, ranging from interactive applications on numerous different consumer electronics devices to advanced measurement capabilities uh, to of course uh, uh, ultra high definition television. Uh, obviously we have a, uh, a Keolis uh, uh, autonomous vehicle here. Uh, if you get inside you will notice there is uh, no steering wheel, there are no brake pedals, but there is next generation television. And so uh, this uh, shuttle, there's another one of these that is actually running a route uh, in the orange lot. So in between uh, Central Hall and South Hall, you can get on a, a shuttle just like this one, uh, but it's uh, wrapped a little bit differently. It's wrapped as the uh, NAB Next Gen Autonomous Transport, uh, but you can get inside, uh, you can uh, ride a route. There are three stops, uh, 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 one by the beer garden, one over at South Hall, and one uh, sort of uh, towards the upper end of, uh, of Central Hall. And you can experience uh, both uh, autonomous uh, vehicles uh, combined with next generation television. We're excited because this is the first time that's been done. I need to offer a thanks to the group at uh, Keolis, uh, thanks to uh, uh, LG uh, and, and Zenith, uh, uh, thanks to Sinclair for uh, broadcasting uh, the signal that, uh, that we are going to be receiving and displaying there, and, um, and also a thanks to the Nevada uh, Center for Advanced Mobility because it was our work with them that really kicked off this project, and we're excited Excited to break new ground here at NAB Show. And with that, I will just say thank you again for being here. Welcome to NAB Show, and I hope you make it a great one. And let me introduce my friend Mike Bergman of the CTA to come up and uh, talk about what's next. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sam. I, I, uh want to mention that I didn't realize I'd be giving my remarks in front of an autonomous vehicle with no steering wheel. Uh, but the Keolis group, I'm sure, has done a terrific job. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to be here this morning. Um, as one of the original founders of it, the ATSC, and with Brian Markwalter, Senior Vice President of Research and Standards, sitting on the ATSC board, CTS, CTA is very happy to be here today. 
Uh, we are excited to be working with the ATSC and with the NAB and with our member companies in anticipation of broad deployment of this standard. The flexibility of over-the-air next-gen TV technology will allow for some great and innovative applications for fixed and mobile receivers. Coupled with the latest innovations in display and audio, next-gen TV, powered by ATSC 3.0, will offer a breathtakingly immersive viewing experience. And it also brings access to a, an array of innovative and interactive information technologies. 2018 is shaping up to be a great year. CTA projects 2018 annual U.S. sales of ultra-high-definition TVs to reach 22 million units, making this the first time that 4K UHD TVs surpass HD TVs in U.S. sales. In summary, we're definitely looking forward to the enhanced television services we'll start seeing in 2018. I'd now like to uh, introduce my friend Ann Shelley. She is Managing Director of Pearl TV, and she'll give us a broadcaster perspective. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, very excited. Uh, Pearl is a sponsor of uh, this initiative, this booth, but also we're even more excited about um, having announced uh, turn on of Phoenix with ATSC 3.0. Uh, we uh, lit uh, the Univision stick there as a partner of ours on, uh, it was 12.01 this past Friday morning. Uh, which um, was no small task. We actually announced this market with our partners, and I have to thank all of our partners in that in this effort, which are Fox, NBC, uh, Univision, PBS, uh, and the Pearl companies that are in that market. But what's significant about that is we launched, we announced that in November of this past year, and we we're on air by March. Um, so broadcasters are dedicated to. Uh, uh, launching 3.0. I think you're going to see more markets in the future. Uh, Phoenix is unique in that it's a business model and consumer test environment. We're calling it an open test bed. We're demonstrating here today uh, an LG implementation. We also, if you noticed, announced multiple manufacturers coming into uh, CE partners coming into Phoenix, uh, LG being the first and also Sony and Samsung. What we have over here are some of the applications we'll be testing, the TV application, advanced advertising, lots of benefits for broadcasters uh, with 3.0. So uh, we're excited to be here and uh, look forward to doing more and um, watch us uh, in Phoenix and join us if you're a manufacturer uh, or a partner or broadcaster. It's an open test bed. Thank you. I love this industry. Uh, I look around me and I look at this crowd and I see people uh, who for myself for, well, you haven't all been here for 42 years, but uh, I look around and I see people who have worked together and grasped uh, problems and resolved problems and worked towards the, the betterment of this industry. And my aunt stated that in November they announced the launch of, uh, of Phoenix. 19 years ago, we, we announced the launch of OFDM. Uh, it took us a little bit longer to get here. Uh, there was a release yesterday that, uh, uh, that made known that uh, the first of our uh, systems in Dallas, uh, we have a, uh, an SFN deployment project underway in Dallas and the first of its participants. The surprise is it's DISH. Uh, went on the air on Thursday, on Wednesday evening, uh, with with an ATSC 3.0 signal, uh, and and you may say it's surprising. Dish lighting up ATSC 3.0. What's behind that? What's behind that is that we have a standard uh, today that is now capable of doing everything that we've wanted it to for so long. We have an ability to reach people wherever they are. We have an ability to integrate across all of the IP networks that exist. We have in front of us hybrid opportunities that, quite frankly, 19 years ago were unimaginable. Uh, and it's because of, of, of the folks that stand in this audience and, and, uh, and others who aren't here who've, who've uh, reached out, grabbed one another's hand, worked together to make that happen. Uh, there were a few stutters along the way. I, in in, uh, in looking looking through my picture gallery, I came up with my ATSC mobile DTV for dummies uh, from the, from the MH days. But uh, MH was really important. MH uh, really 
drilled into broadcasters the importance of mobility in their future. Uh, and so, the, 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 again, the standard that we have today for Sinclair is a mobile first standard. It's not the only thing we're going to do, but I can tell you that it's going to be in the forefront of everything that we do. And with that, uh, I'm going to announce John Lawson. Uh, he, is he here somewhere? Uh, by the way, John, John was as well. We've worked together for a long time. John was the uh, head of the Mobile 500. Uh, and well, thank you, Mark. Thank you. It's an honor to be with you here today. From the very beginning, the ATSC community saw the potential to really improve alerting in our country and around the world with ATSC 3.0. And Mark's right, it has its roots in MH when we created something called Mobile EAS, where the technology is so much more versatile uh, and powerful today. And it's not just the ATSC community. If you look at our booth, we've attracted an advisory committee of the largest alert originators in the United States. We have National Weather Service, we have FEMA, we have APCO, which runs 911 call centers, 911 call centers. We have NICMEC, which issues Amber Alerts. And we have the Science and Technology Directorate at the Department of Homeland Security. If you want to see where all this is going, there's about a 14 second video in the middle of our loop from the National Severe Storms Laboratory in Oklahoma City. And it's all about probabilistic forecasting and very, very strict geo, geo targeting. And they need a system like like uh, AWARN uh, to do that. So we're very, very proud of our support. I'm happy to say that we've uh, more than doubled our support this year with renewals of our current members, our previous members, and our new members. With the support of uh, NAB and Pearl, the increased support from them, we're, we're launching a, uh, a beta development project, which we hope to be testing in, in Phoenix and Cleveland. Um, this is a strategic opportunity for the broadcasting industry and the consumer electronics and allied industries. Not everyone gets it, but we hope that uh, this is the year that more broadcasters join the AWARN Alliance. We've got the nine biggest groups. We need to go down uh, the, cap, the uh, market cap chain a bit. Uh, we've got CTA and LG. We hope more CE makers will, will join us. We hope to get our first, uh, we hope to get our first network. There's a, the phrase going around the show called conscious capitalism or profit with purpose. I think of, I think of AWARN, Advanced Alerting, which we're developing along with our friends at the AEAI team. I think of it as, uh, as smart capitalism. And so we see AWARN as a real winner for the whole ecosystem, and we hope the whole ecosystem gets behind us. So thank you, and let me introduce Craig Todd um, with Dalton. Thank you, John. So Dolby has been very, working very hard to get the standard forth. Lots of people contributed. We worked with many of the people out here. And we're very happy with the result of the ATSC 3 standard. The Dolby works, we try to improve the entertainment experience. And certainly 1.0 certainly was a big step forward with high definition digital TV and five channel surround sound. 3.0 raises the bar significantly higher. Of course, the video can be as high resolution, 4K. It can deliver high dynamic range, very wide color gamut, improved video precision. It can deliver the Dolby Vision experience, which we think is the best of HDR and is on demonstration around the corner here. Um, also in audio, whereas moving from stereo to five channel was quite a big step. I think moving from five channel to the immersive audio, the Dolby Atmos experience, is perhaps an even bigger step forward. And ATSC 3.0 can support that using the Dolby AC4 codec. So we look forward to working to help broadcasters implement and achieve the high quality that the system is capable of. So Mark, can we get this 3.0 show on the road? Thank you. Thank you, Craig. So I don't want to say that I forgot to mention one of our sponsors, so I'll just say, I just wanted to say the, the best for last, LG Electronics, of all companies to forget, 
you know, is a big major contributor to this booth, but not just in terms of uh, material support, but with the great help from John Taylor, who is always uh, helping ATSC with our communications um, uh, strategy and trying to get the word out, helping me get the word out to the industry. So thank you, LG and John. Well, it's time to get the ribbon cutting ceremony uh, going. I'd like to um, ask, um, in addition to our sponsors, ask any of the members of the ATSC board that are here to step up and as we uh, do the ceremonial cut of the ribbon. This is big enough. You see how big the size of it? We have to hold the ribbon. Can we get, are you guys just step back just a little bit? Maybe five or six steps so we can uh, back up and get everybody out. Put your thumb in between. Thank you. Right there. Yeah. All right now, count three, on the count of five, we're going to cut the ribbon. Okay, five. Dave, okay. uh, let's get a couple three? shots for five. Five. Oh, four, three, two, three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, get all there. We all get a little fancy. I want to know what you're going to do with those. Okay, yeah. 